Good evening, hi, and welcome to Dentist Channel Online. I'm Dr. Aparna Pandya, and today with us we have Dr. Shweta. And uh, Dr. Shweta is an orthodontist who graduated in 2019 from Kaylee Dental College, Bangalore. She did her UG from CSI Dental College, Madurai, and she has six national and international publications to her credit. She owns Amalgam PG app a dental entrance exam preparation app. She's currently a consultant orthodontist in Chennai. It's a great pleasure and absolute honor to have you with us today, doctor. Over to you. Thank you, Dr. Aparna. Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening. So I'll just share my screen. Uh, good evening, everyone. And I thank Dr. Aparna and Dentist Channel Online for this opportunity to... Uh, just a second. Just turn on my video. And thank you everyone for this opportunity. So in this uh, webinar today, I will be talking about a very important topic, uh, both orthodontists as well as non-orthodontists should know, which is retention. So we all, uh, uh, after active orthodontic treatment, we all go with retainers and we imagine like uh, orthodontic treatment ends there. That is not the case. Retention is very well a part and parcel of the orthodontic treatment, which has to be planned beforehand. So in this webinar, I'll be covering few important topics, which will include uh, relapse in orthodontics, retention, its importance, various types of retention and its indications types of retainers and uh, various common problems that we come across uh, regarding the retainers and the retention in total and how, how to tackle them. So why do we need retention? Retention is basically to maintain the teeth as it is, the way we had stopped the active orthodontic treatment, just the position of the tooth has to remain like that. But uh, retention is important because relapse is a very important part of orthodontic treatment because it tends to move the tooth back to its original position. So why do we have relapse? There are various uh, theories that revolves around the uh, relapse and these are the various options, uh, various uh, factors that are uh, being uh, addressed uh, regarding to why there is a relapse. One is the severity of the original mal occlusion. If the mal occlusion is uh, very severe and a lot of uh, distance have to be moved to the to achieve a certain type of occlusion, there might be a, some, some, some sort of relapse that can happen. One next is post-orthodontic occlusion. If it's not stable, the tooth may tend to go back to its original position. One of the most important uh, theories is the neuromuscular influences. If there is any sort of neuromuscular uh, imbalance that is happening after the orthodontic treatment, the teeth tends to uh, you know, automatically shift back to the way it was because that is the, uh, the teeth generally resides in the neutral zone, the balance between the labial and the lingual musculature. So if we don't correct the abnormal muscle forces, the tooth the tends to go back. Next is systemic health and disease uh, in which the bone turnover may be affected in such patients. So we need to retain the position in uh, for a certain period of time so that the bone can be reorganized around the new position. Then there is a periodontal and gingival health. Periodontitis, active periodontitis uh, can uh, redirect the occlusal forces so that there may be some sort of tooth migration happening. Next is uh, retention schedule, or is it is also a very important factor because if the teeth is not retained uh, adequately, then it might tend to uh, relapse. So uh, there are various theories regarding uh, how a uh, good retention can be maintained. A lot of theories and a lot of uh, research has been put into this, and I will be discussing few important theories. One is that the teeth that has been moved. Uh, tend to return to their former position. This is a very important uh, uh, theory, which generally pertains to relapse. Like whatever movement we make orthodontically, the teeth has a natural uh, tendency to go back. So all the orthodontists re re recommend retention so that the teeth doesn't move back. This is one of the most 
uh, first theories. Next is elimination of the cause of the malocclusion will prevent recurrence. So any neuromuscular factors, uh, like I said, uh, thumb thrusting, thumb sucking, if it is not eliminated, the tooth is not going to stay in position. So elimination of the etiology is very important in maintaining the new tooth position. That the malocclusion is should be overcorrected. So uh, it was postulated saying that since the teeth always returns back to its original, tends to return back to its original position, if we overcorrect, the tooth may come in between and rest in the uh, ideal position. It is sometimes possible in certain malocclusions, but it is not always true uh, because there might be some sort of changes that can happen if we overcorrect and it may not uh, tend to go back to its ideal position. Then proper occlusion is an important factor in holding teeth in their corrected position. Ideal occlusion has always been a very important factor. Proper interdigitation, proper uh, proximal contact that can uh, prevent uh, rotational tendencies or sagittal movements. It's a very important factor while finishing an orthodontic treatment because this is going to hold the tooth in position. Bone adjacent tissues must be allowed to reorganize around a newly positioned tooth. We are moving the tooth. The bone is remodeling and moving to its new position. So we need to give time to the periodontal tissues, the PDL, the uh, alveolar bone and the gingiva to reorganize around the new position so that it is stabilized in that position. If you are not going to retain or fold the tooth, uh, before the bone and the other tissues reorganize, as usual, the PDL tends to pull the tooth back and it is going to uh, go back to its old position. And there is one more theory say that if the lower incisors are placed over the basal bone, they are more likely to remain in good alignment. This uh, is a very important factor because we have a lot of malocclusions. We tend to procline the incisors a bit. So in such cases, we need to give permanent retention so that lower incisors any uh, change in the intercanine width or arch width, like in the last theory, arch form, particularly in the mandible arch, if it's altered, it is always going to relapse back. So in such cases, retention is very highly mandatory. And uh, corrections carried during the periods of growth are less likely to relapse. This is attributed to the fact that there are changes that happen during the growth, which accommodates the new positions of the tooth. So certain malocclusions when treated during the period of growth tend to not relapse. So, so what is this retention period for? Why do we need the whatever one, one year or two years of retention? Why do we need it for? One, like I said, we need to allow the periodontal and the gingival tissues to reorganize around the newly positioned tooth. And next, to minimize the changes in the orthodontic result from subsequent growth. So if we are treating a class three malocclusion, we need to retain the newly uh, positioned tooth till the mandibular growth is complete so that if you are going to leave the tooth normally, the mandible is going to again grow back and get back to the class three position. So whatever changes we are uh, doing during the time of growth, we need to retain it until the growth is complete so that there is no skeletal growth that can change the dental pattern. Next is to permit the neuromuscular adaptation to the correct position. We need uh, that uh, muscle has memory. The muscle memory uh, tends to push the tooth back to its original position. So when we are holding the tooth in its position, the soft tissue, the neuromuscular tissue adapts around the newly positioned tooth, which helps in the stability of the treatment. Next is to, to maintain the unstable position. If we are uh, doing any sort of uh, surgical case, we are doing a camouflage without uh, is a, probably uh, during a uh, surgical orthodontics, we need to keep uh, the tooth in position with a fixed retainer so that uh, we have uh, pushed across the borders of the neuromuscular stability. So we need to hold the teeth in position so that it doesn't uh, relapse back. Next is how long to retain? How, how long do we need to uh, retain a um, uh, treated tooth? So there are various theories. One is the standard uh, re retention protocol where generally three to six months of full-time wear of a removal retainer is given. And there is something called as a prolonged retention where in this case of diastema or severe rotations, we give it for a longer period for more, a removal retainer for a year or two. Then there is permanent retention. Like I said, fixed retainer is given permanently so that uh, it doesn't move at all. 
but this is a very vague classification based on this uh, duration of retention the type of retention retention on the whole is classified into three types one is limited retention two is moderate retention and the three, third one is permanent or semi permanent retention and i'll be talking about indications of these uh, retentions so coming to limited retention as you can see this is a uh, cross bite situation anterior cross bite anterior cross bites uh, generally need not be uh, retained for a longer period of time because uh, they are mechanically obstructed from relaxing back because the ma man mandibular teeth is going to come at the back of the maxillary teeth proper overbite is very essential to prevent relapse so anterior cross bites need not be uh, with when finished with an ad adequate overjet and overbite need not have a uh, very limited retention is required next is cases treated with serial extraction the treat uh, the treatment is done when the tooth is erupting so the tooth gradually erupts into the position we want it to be so very limited retention is required in cases where we do serial extraction next is uh, situations with high canines the canine is not going to intrude back so in such situations limited retention is enough and also cases we treat with uh, we retard the growth of the maxillary arch maxillary growth generally stops uh, before the mandibular growth so in situations where we are retarding the maxillary growth like a class 2 situation with the maxillary prognathism using a head care uh, very limited retention is required because maxillary growth ceases at a certain point and uh, we can go ahead with the treatment without any uh, prolonged retention next is moderate retention moderate retention is generally indicated in class one extraction as well as non extraction cases this as you can see is a class one is an extraction case by max case with crowding and this is a class one non extraction case with mild spaces so a uh, full time uh, removal retainer there for a year or two will suffice for this next is deep bite cases deep bite cases generally required moderate retention and some sort of active appliance or retainers are required as, uh, as you can see if you are intruding the incisors to correct the deep bite we may need to provide a retainer with an anterior bite plane and if we are extruding the molars or uh, changing the mandibular plane angle to uh, increase the facial height and then we are correcting the deep bite then we need to uh, probably uh, retain until the growth vertical growth is complete vertical growth is the last uh, growth that stops in a human being facial growth so we need to retain until that so moderate retention is required the permanent retention is not required and in class 2 division 2 cases where uh, one important aspect of uh, this malocclusion is the lip support high lip line is the important cause of this malocclusion so we need to change the uh, positions of the teeth and wait for the neuromuscular uh, forces to adapt to the new position so till then we need to uh, retain these cases next coming to permanent or semi permanent retention uh, permanent retention is required in cleft lip and palate cases where we'll be expanding the maxillary arch and maxillary arch we expand to some extent where we are uh, we need a lot of space and in the, those cases we need to retain permanently because maxillary expansions are not stable since we are altering the arch width and also the intercanine distance next is severe rotations which are not treated uh, during the eruption stage Uh, rotations that are treated when the tooth is erupting generally require moderate retention because uh, it usually stabilizes in that position. But such severe rotations that are uh, presented uh, after uh, full eruption of the teeth generally require permanent retention because they are highly unstable. And severe generalized spacing cases with uh, you know habits like tongue thrusting or uh, tongue sucking need uh, permanent retention, especially midline diastema cases. require permanent retention because these spaces tend to open up so coming to the type of retainers we discussed about the different types of retention uh, permanent semi permanent and moderate and limited so with what do we give such uh, retention we go into the retainers retainers are basically removable and fixed to classify in general so in removable retainers there is something called as conventional retainers which is commonly the retainers we use which is the hollis retainer like you can see hollis retainer contains a label book and the adams clasp uh, this label book can be modified uh, either between the canine premolar or between the premolar 
to you know uh, if there is an extraction case and we do not want to put pressure into the extraction space between the canine and premolar we can possibly change the position of the uh, uh, labial board between the molar and the premolar so various modifications of this holly's region are available like you can see here which is the pegs wrap around region where there is no uh, labial board basically it is a region that covers from the incisor till the molar it wraps around the entire arch so this is a wrap around retainer with you know a covering on the incisal area so that the teeth doesn't move forward or backward and the teeth are retained in the position so there are various uh, uh, modifications of this holly's retainer where you can add a, a piece of acrylic in front of the uh, labial bow to you know keep uh, for better fit and also to keep the tooth position uh, firm and also you can uh, and also various other modifications like bite planes can be included which i'll be discussing later and coming to these are the conventional retainers and this is the aesthetic retainers now uh, come we are moving into an era of aesthetic orthodontics where patients want aesthetic appliances and if you are going to give uh, wires as retainers patient are moving towards aesthetic orthodontics where you give a thermoformed uh, uh, retainer which is an sx retainer which uh, after the debonding we could take a impression or cat cam designed uh, thermoform retainer which keeps the tooth in the same position one disadvantage is that it can uh, if it allows certain bit of movement due to flexion it tends to uh, wear over time compared to the hollies and this is a tooth positioner this tooth positioner fabrication requires a face board transfer since, since we are keeping the tooth in the occlusion occluded position so we cannot just fabricate it we need a uh, face board transfer to uh, make it next coming to the uh, fixed lingual retainers fixed lingual retainers generally uh, used uh, in uh, areas where their interarch instability is expected we uh, generally recommend uh, a fixed retainer in the lower arch anticipating late mandibular growth because uh, uh, as we age the mandibular tends to grow in a more uh, mesial direction and there is a uh, decrease in the arch width as we age so there will be an expected amount of late mandibular crowding so to prevent this crowding fixed retainers are generally given and uh, in due to the shift from the uh, hard tissue to the soft tissue paradigm we keep the incisors little proclined sometimes to compensate for the soft tissue aesthetics so in such cases where we anticipate an arch instability or violation of the arch instep arch stability we go with fixed lingual retainers so what are the advantages is that it's it's not invisible it is fixed there so we need not expect any patient compliance in this uh, cases and there is uh, you know it is a it's a permanent one until it breaks so it's a good uh, alternative to the removal retainers so there are various types of retainers and one is the mandibular canine to canine retainers which are uh, prefabricated they are rigid and there are flexible spiral wire retainer which we uh, modify it according to the patient's uh, arch form then others include a band and spur retainer a lot of different types of uh, fixed retainers are available commonly used as a fixable flexible spiral wire retainer so mandibular canine to canine is generally given because uh, canine interarch width is generally altered we could extend the retainer to the premolar in case of extraction space uh, to prevent extraction space reopening so uh, like i said it prevents incisor recrowding to achieve lower incisor position in space and also it prevents the rotation of rotational relapses in uh, mandibular incisors there are basically three generations of these retainers first generation is a blue edged alloy wire a simple loop is placed at the end of the each wire and it's bonded to all the teeth from canine to canine and second generation is plain edge alloy a twisted three standard wire is used and this basically the retainer generations is the type of wire and third generation is sandblasted for more retention so this is the uh, spiral retainer that is bonded from canine to canine this is the commonly given retainer in midline diastema patient cases which requires permanent retention you can give uh, a spiral flexible spiral wire retainer two re two wires can be given for more stability to prevent rotational relapse and this is a custom made uh, retainer which has a like a pad around the uh, wire this this wire has a one point contact on the tooth so 
when the tooth tends to rotate it allows certain amount of tooth movement but this uh, customized uh, retainer here as you can see has a pad which has a wide base so rotations cannot happen because it's uh, it's bonded around a wide area and in some cases in adult patients who are periodontally compromised and who have have severe rotations in the premolar can go with a labial directly bonded retainer where a lingual retainer is failing or uh, some kind of periodontal compromises there we can go for a labial retainer which is much easier to clean than a lingual retainer so coming to uh, what we saw as conventional fixed and removable retainers is our passive retainers they generally hold the teeth where as it is but active retainers not only hold the teeth in position but also uh, tends to correct minor uh, Uh, relapses and also uh, prevents tooth movement so like you can see i said there are plenty of modifications of the holly's region this is one such thing with the z spring in the top if there is any rotational relapses or some sort of uh, anterior to posterior movement you can activate the loops of this uh, z spring and correct it while retaining the position without undergoing a retreatment we can correct with the removal appliance itself also if there is any space opening or smile protrusion that is happening during the retention the holly's loop can be compressed and uh, it can be used to close minor spacing in the upper arch and the lower arches so this is the holly's uh, appliance with an anterior biplane generally given in deep bite cases uh, where we have uh, intruded the incisors so this will help uh, maintain the intrusion and this is sometimes in patients where we require a functional retainer missing teeth we could add the teeth like a denture and use it as a retainer so uh, this can be used as an active retainer and in patients with uh, abnormal oral musculature like abnormal tongue positioning tongue thrusting we could incorporate either a blue grass appliance or a tongue rip to you know prevent the abnormal forces this is a functional appliance herbst appliance that can be used in patients as a retainer this is basically a splint with a passive uh, herbst appliance that keeps the mandibular position positioning so that uh, there can be class 2 uh, treatment after the class 2 functional appliance this can be used as a active retainer then uh, various class 3 twin blocks can be used after a face mask therapy to maintain the for, uh, uh, backward positioning of the mandible and face masks can also be used as a night time wear with the retainer to uh, you know redirect the mandibular growth till the growth is complete these orthopedic and functional appliances can be used until the growth of the uh, patient is complete so that we can prevent any skeletal relapses and uh, this is a sx retainer but with certain modifications can be used as an aligner with mild space opening or rotational correction uh, or mild crowding can be corrected with a, a sx retainer with uh, you know like an aligner basically like an aligner so uh, these are the various retainers that are used uh, in uh, in the practice so there are certain procedures we are uh, giving these retainers and uh, uh, that can hold the tooth in position what are the various procedures that can be done to aid to or morally complement the relapse one is phrenectomy one of the important causes of midline diastema is a high frenum if this frenum is not relieved post treatment it can lead to relapse even with the retainer in place so this uh, phrenectomy procedure is done to relieve the abnormal forces happening between uh, that is that tends to open the midline diastema this is done after space closure unlike shown in the image once the space closure is complete we need to do, go ahead with the phrenectomy before debonding so what happens is when the phrenectomy is done there is amount of scar tissue that is formed between these two teeth so this scar tissue itself will prevent uh, the relapse from happening this will hold the tooth in position so once the space closure is complete the frenum is relieved and then the uh, retainer is given uh, and the appliance can be debonded next one of the most notorious molluscosions to relapse is a rotational relapse uh, the transeptal fibers tend to pull the tooth back into the rotation after we derotate it so a uh, so a procedure called as suprachrestal fibrotomy is done well, basically we uh, cut all the pedial ligament around the tooth 
so that the transeptal fibers that is pulling the tooth is severed. So uh, we take a knife, generally two to three mm into the sulcus, we cut the pedial ligament. And this is procedure is done once the active uh, uh, tooth movement is complete. And there, is, there should be no evidence of a gingival or a periodontal disease. So this is done, this highly helps in rotational relapse. This procedure can also be done with a laser. So this procedure, once the tooth uh, is uh, put into this uh, desired position before rebonding, this procedure is done, is stabilized. And once the remodeling around the tooth is done, happens in, a new, in the new position, the appliance can be rebonded and the retainer can be given. Even after this procedure, this uh, supracrestal fibrotomy or perecision is done, fixed retainer is a mandatory for all rotational relapses, that is permanent retention. So these are the various uh, procedures, the retainers that we usually use. So post retention changes, what are the fact, what are the various changes that can happen? What are the problems that can happen after uh, debonding, that is during the retention phase? So basically uh, for every patient, we cannot predict how if they are going, if there will be any sort of relapse. Based on the guidelines, certain malocclusion, we can anticipate relapse and uh, be prepared. But in all patients, we cannot predict how much relapse is going to happen, which tooth is going to relapse. We cannot predict that. So it is always uh, prudent to follow the guidelines so that uh, we can cover the basics and whatever unpredictable relapses that happen, we need to be prepared to manage that. So uh, the next is arch length and width, like I said, constrict over time. This causes a late mandibular crowding even after the completion of the growth. The arch length and width tends to constrict uh, due to the mesial migration. So we need to be prepared about that and we have to give a fixed retainer for such cases. Generally, uh, fixed retainer is mandatory in all mandibular arches so that this uh, arch length constriction can be uh, prevented. Maxillary arch is much uh, better compared to the mandibular arch. So rotations usually relapse towards the initial position. Like I said, rotational relapse is very notorious and uh, surgical procedures like this perecision can be done uh, along with a permanent retention. And various evidence-based uh, studies and have found that early treatment may not improve the long-term stability. It was once theorized that the earlier you treat a malocclusion, the better is the stability of it. But it was found it is not so. Uh, however, the treatment is, the tooth tends to relapse in certain cases and the procedure is not really well understood. And uh, in some cases, early post-retention stability is seen for one to two years. But the retention protocol does not end there. The retention is for lifelong. So uh, even if it does not relapse after three years or four years, after 10, 20 years, it might relapse. And there are various factors that affects the relapse. So it is always prudent to uh, call the patients for reviews and manage such uh, post-retention stability. And like I said, a lot of uh, aspects of relapse is not currently understood. There are various theories. But a lot of aspects are not understood. So lifelong retention, especially in the mandibular arch, is the best uh, way to uh, prevent or safeguard against relapses. And extraction of the third molar, like I said, is, is one of the theories, like the extract third molar buds that might press along the mandibular arch may tend to cause crowding in the anterior. But that most not so. And uh, it was found after various rigorous studies and whatever evidence is there, it was found that the cases that were treated uh, with uh, proper finishing, proper interdigitation uh, had fared much better than the cases which were uh, uh, not uh, up to the mark, finished up to the mark. The cases which had ideal overjet overbite with excellent uh, interdigitation tend to be uh, read, had much higher stability rate than the cases which were did not have that finishes. So uh, even after all these, there my patients might come uh, come to us with uh, complaining of relapse. So what do we do for relapse? So there are various procedures we need, we can do, and uh, the, based on the severity of the relapse, we can take a call according to the treatment. One uh, first is the retreatment. How much uh, 
the patients, if they're not satisfied and if it is too much of relapse that is happening, we need to retreat the case to get it into a normal position. And in such cases, we need to identify the etiology of the relapse, uh, why it has happened. We need to understand the basis of the relapse so that we can prevent further relapses and we, we cannot keep treating again and again. So retreatment is one option. Second is lingual arch in certain cases of mandibular crowding can uh, prevent the uh, can help in alignment of the lower arch. And we could give removal retainers with springs, like I said, Z springs to correct minor crowdings and rotations. And in patients we are, where we are treating functional uh, appliance therapy with headgears, a face mask, we need to have a orthopedic uh, force also uh, intact so that we can prevent relapse in cases where uh, such relapse happen, we need to go back to these orthopedic appliances to help with the relax. Next is if the patient comes back to us with crowding due to late mandibular crowding, we could go with uh, interproximal reduction, uh, IPR, and uh, create little more space and align it back into the position. In certain cases, the bad relapse is very mild and patient doesn't have a lot of complaint. Certain amount of acceptable relapse can be left this that way and uh, it, uh, the acceptable range is basically, we cannot decide. It is based on the patients. If the patient is okay with the amount of mild rotation or mild anterior posterior changes, we could not retreat that. If the patient demands uh, treatment, we can always go for uh, mild correction. So coming to problems with relapse, next is the problems with the retainers. How are, uh, what are the troubleshooting we need to do with retainers? One, uh, with regard to the retainers, there could be various uh, problems. One is the lack of fit. Lack of fit can be due to uh, various reasons. One is wear and tear. When the patient is wearing for a long time, the appliance may tend to have some amount of wear and tear, which can lead to lack of fit. Like you can see in this image, the Adam's class is not sitting exactly on the molar. And there might be some sort of interference in the molar region during occlusion. So this can be adjusted uh, when the patient comes for routine visits and uh, the appliance may not fit. So new appliance can be fabricated at that point of time. The patient also can come with appliance breakage and uh, this has to be monitored. Generally, removable appliance breakage is easily identified and can be rectified. But uh, lingual fixed re retainer breakages are a little problematic because the patient cannot see what is happening. If there is any uh, breakage that has happened and it is poking, the patient might uh, be able to tell. But if there is a slight debonding that is happening and the patient does not have any discomfort, it may go unnoticed. So this uh, is a very important problem with regard to this fixed ring will retainers. So a routine uh, review uh, once a year or twice a year, uh, one, once in two years is important because we can spot the debonding and we can repair it. You can see this uh, retainer is debonded in the incisor region and uh, the can canine region. So we can repair it and we can correct. The one important uh, caution we need to take care of is if a lingual retainer is debonded, the relapse happen much faster than uh, a removable retainer because uh, there will be abnormal forces. There won't be any force here, but there will be forces directed on the other teeth. So the other teeth can go inside and the debonded teeth can go out and the relapse can happen at a very faster rate. So it is very important to uh, repair this retainers at the earliest. And another important aspect is that demineralization and plaque accumulation around the lingual bonded retainers is, is, is a very important concern because patients... Uh, have to take care of their hygiene uh, very meticulously and these retainers tend to accumulate a uh, certain amount of plaque and as you can see so routine uh, visits after the treatment is very important to battle certain things even if the patient does not identify breakages patient cannot see periodontal disease and caries happening beneath the retainers only a dentist will be able to point out. So whenever a patient comes for review, it is very important that we check for any sort of signs of demineralization. We need to um, 
make efforts to prevent all these mishaps so coming to tips tips for successful retention so what do what all we need to do to uh, keep the mal occlusion that we treated in the most stable position this uh, written relapse is something that we cannot avoid relapse happens since a very misunderstood topic and a lot of research is required in this field whatever we need to uh, know the guidelines if we follow we can minimize the amount of re relapse that can happen in a patient and improve the stability so whatever tips that i am going to give will help you uh, improve the retention of the treated case and to an extent prevent relapse because relapse uh, cannot be prevented but with these guidelines we can be prevent uh, prepared to uh, manage the relapse and also prevent it to certain extent one is retention plan should start during the start of the treatment whenever we are starting the treatment initial diagnosis uh, during the diagnosis itself we have to find out if possible the etiology of the malocclusion we may not be able to uh, identify the etiology of all malocclusions but uh, diagnosis and treatment planning is a very crucial stage in which not just the mechanics is planned even the retention plan should also be planned if there is any severe rotations if um, there is any uh, some sort of periodontal issue that is happening before treatment which has to be noted down because once the treatment is over we will not know what teeth was in which position so that we cannot plan the uh, retention plan for that particular teeth alone so initially it is very important that we plan the retention plan and then uh, executed during the end of the treatment next is patient compliance patient compliance is a very important aspect because uh, the re retention of if we are giving a uh, lingual i mean uh, removal retainers uh, is basically on the hands of the patient so during the treatment we'll know how compliant the patient is so based on that we can plan if the patient uh, will be able to ha handle a removal retainer or we should be giving a non compliant retainer for the patient and then periodontal assessment after treatment the patient is periodontally compromised it is better to go with a permanent retention because it will help the bone to reorganize uh, around the new position and also help in the redirecting the occlusal forces and prevents migration of tooth next is routine review as i said helps not only in just uh, repair, helping in assessment of the relapse but also management of the relapse if the patient comes uh, to us immediately after any appliance breakage the relapse can be prevented the, if there is no routine visits or reviews that doesn't happen uh, sometimes it may go into a retreatment so uh, we need to uh, recall the patients as much as possible and review it so that we can prevent relapse that can happen due to the patient's uh, side and also uh, due to any sort of appliance breakage breakages and uh, other issues and uh, we should also motivate the patient from the beginning about the retention protocol so that they are prepared some patients may not be informed initially about uh, how long we will be giving the retainers so they will be uh, they will believe that the treatment will get over in one years or two years and i they did not wear anything else so in such patients after the treatment when we say we have to wear this appliance for another two years or three years they will not be prepared so if we are initially motivating the patients to uh, asking them that even after the treatment you will be required to wear this they will be mentally prepared and they will be much more compliant in uh, maintaining helping us in maintaining the stability of the treatment then uh, very important is assessment of the cause of the malocclusion and attention to it uh, retainers uh, if there is any sort of uh, normal muscle forces anything uh, that is related it can if it can be incorporated into the retain it has to be done like i said with the uh, if it, there is any tongue thrusting abnormal tongue position that can you know flare the incisors back again we need to address it with the tongue crib or a blue glass appliance so that that forces are redistributed and the muscle balance is are uh, created and uh, paying attention to the soft tissue is very important because uh, we tend to see the hard tissue if it's in alignment if it's in the arch if it's uh, properly positioned uh, the tip dot but we uh, sometimes tend to ignore the abnormal the soft tissues around the tooth so uh, pay we are moving into a soft tissue paradigm and we are paying more importance to the giving more importance to the soft tissue because they are the ones deciding the uh alignment of the tooth so uh, 
even during initial assessment and as well as after during the final assessment it is very important we pay attention to the soft tissue like i said the tongue position is very important aspect that can cause lapse tongue position the lip support everything has to be paid attention to if there is any abnormal forces we need to address to it during the retention phase so that we can improve the stability of the treatment so uh, coming to the end of the uh, presentation we need to understand that the retainers play a very important aspect and the retention period of orthodontic treatment is uh, as much an active phase than um, uh, as the uh, main uh, active mechanism mechanotherapy so retainers uh, have to be incorporated are to be planned in the pre treatment stage and uh, incorporated into the main treatment plan and explain to the patient this will help in the stability of improving the stability of the treatment and uh, thank you all for your patient listening thank you so much dr shweta that was indian and enlightening session uh, so before we move on to the questions i would like to share uh, the company presentation uh doctor can you stop sharing now yeah okay so as we all know dentist channel online is uh the first digital dental media and uh, we offer services to both dental professionals as well as dental organizations uh dental students can have the advantage of knowing dental news webinars courses events premium videos clinic it services prime membership you can submit a scientific article or or then or, or have help in dental business contribute videos buy and sell so for dental organizations as well there are several benefits like you know for hosting events or graphic designing social media management website development participation certificate will be provided even registrations can be done you can have consultation services content writing and designing list your business or advertise with us so there are more than 700 live dental webinars which has already been conducted and more than 25 dental workshops more than 40k participation certificates has been issued and more than 400 plus national and international speakers have uh, worked with us there are more than 300 plus oral care videos under the hashtag save the teeth so we have also been certified for maximum speakers participating in virtual dental program on oral implantology by india book of records so there are several benefits of attaining prime membership like you can have a personalized account at dentist channel online you can access all the webinars organized by us there will be special discount on dental courses you can have certification by with cpb cd pro points which you can easily download uh, from the profile you can have regular updates and news about dentistry access to scientific articles and recorded webinars you can participate as a speaker or publish public awareness videos all the participants will be getting certificate of participation at the end of the webinar so why wait be a prime member and you can uh, have it all at 799 per year which is equivalent to only 10 dollars so if you use the promo code ap100 you will get assured discount so these are our upcoming uh, webinars so coming back thank you so much dr shweta so we'll now take up some questions so uh, dr yash kumar jain is asking in case of deep bite and periodontically weak teeth how to uh, how how do we give a fixed retainer uh, in deep bite uh, basically if you are undergoing uh, intrusion of the anterior teeth you should uh, give the removable retainer with a bite plate if you are intruding the lower anteriors uh, it is better to give uh, a bite plane and also anterior bite plane and the hollies appliance and lower arch we could give a fixed lingual retainer which is always given uh, in all lingual arches and if uh, anterior intrusion and that is the maxillary intrusion is done fixed retainer can be given from the canine to canine 
And if we are extruding the molars, in growing patients, if you are doing it, generally the ma mandibular ramus remodels and it is usually stable. But if you are doing it in adult patients where uh, intrusion, uh, uh, intrusion of the pre molars are not that stable, we can give a posterior bite plane and uh, this chewies that we give to prevent uh, intrusion. And also we need to retain them with a functional appliance like posterior bite plane till the growth is complete. So that will help so to a certain extent with the stability and also in deep bite cases we uh, i think that was that's what he means uh, there will be a bite that can uh, uh, prevent or can in, that can hit the upper uh, lingual retainer and it can break it if maxillary lingual retainer breakage is very common uh, and we can use uh, uh, this articulating paper and mark the areas in which the lower teeth contact and you can give it a little gingivally or a more uh, uh, survive, I mean, uh, closely to avoid the areas that the mandibular teeth contacts the maxillary teeth to prevent breakage. And uh, in periodontally weak teeth, uh, it is very important to give a fixed retainer because uh, like just like periodontal splinting, it works. Uh, we can uh, splint the mandibular as well as the maxillary incisors. Yes, thank you so much, doctor. And how do we decide the retention duration? Retention duration, like I said, uh, initially has to be planned. What I, the type of malocclusion basically will give us an idea about how much time it is re retained. Generally, uh, we give a, a moderate retention period protocol for all malocclusions, extraction as well as non-extraction. Lower arches are generally given permanent retention. In cases of premolar extraction space where the patient is a horizontal grower, there is a high tendency for relapse. We can give a, a bonded retainer across the extraction space to prevent uh, retention and also, uh, for, sorry, prevent relapse. And also uh, the malocclusion, like I said, uh, limited retention, cross bites does not require a lot of retention. Based on that, we can plan the duration of retention. Thank you so much, Dr. It was indeed a very, very enlightening uh, session. Thank you for your time.